Welcome to Calvary. We're glad that you could join us for worship today. It is a pleasure to have you. Calvary would like to wish everyone a happy Mother's Day, and we hope that you have a wonderful day. As we gather for worship, we think about the home. Maybe home isn't feeling so homey right now. Maybe you feel a little trapped at home. But there's a home that we long for, a home in heaven. And we might wonder, how do we get to that home? Well, it's through our risen Savior. It's a home that is perfect, a home that we want to be someday. And so we say, home sweet home. Thank you for worshiping with us. We hope that you worship with us again. Welcome to Calvary. We're glad that you could join us for worship today. If you'd like to follow along with our worship folder, you can find it on our website. It will also be posted on the screen for you. We ask that the Lord bless our worship today and we'll begin with the opening hymn.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful, and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil, and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you of all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. God, you form the minds of your faithful people into a single will. Make us love what you command and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may ever yearn for the lasting joys of heaven. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is Acts chapter 17, verses 1 to 12. The Lord wants all people to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. So he sends out his people to proclaim that truth so that they can be part of his family. When Paul and Silas had traveled through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to the Thessalonica, where there was a Jewish synagogue. As was his custom, Paul went to the Jews, and on three Sabbath days, he led them in a discussion from the Scriptures, explaining and proving that the Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead. He also said, This Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Christ. Some of them were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a great number of God-fearing Greeks and more than a few of the prominent women. But the Jews became jealous and gathered from the marketplace some wicked men, who formed a mob and started a riot in the city. They rushed to Jason's house and searched for Paul and Silas in order to bring them out to the mob. When they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some of the brothers before the city officials, shouting, these men who have stirred up trouble all over the world have come here too. And Jason was welcomed them as guests. They are all acting contrary to Caesar's decree, saying that there is another king, Jesus. The crowd and the city officials were stirred up when they heard these things. They took a security bond from Jason and the others and then let them go. Then that same night, the brothers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. When they arrived, they went into the Jewish synagogue. Now the Bereans were more noble-minded than the Thessalonians. They received the word very eagerly and examined the scriptures every day to see if these things were so. Many of them believed, along with more than a few prominent Greek women and men. This is the word of the Lord. We join in speaking the Psalm of the Day, Psalm 33. You are encouraged to speak along the refrain and the glory be to the Father. The earth is full of the goodness of God, the goodness of our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise Him. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. 
By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, their starry hosts by the breath of his mouth. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The earth is full of the goodness of God, the goodness of our God. The Lord foils the plans of the nations. He thwarts the purposes of the peoples. But the plans of the Lord stand firm forever, the purposes of his heart through all generations. The Lord loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of his unfailing love. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The earth is full of the goodness of God, the goodness of our God. The second lesson is 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4-10. to 10. At one point in our lives, we were outside of God's home, outside of God's family. But by His grace and mercy, He sent His one and only Son to die for us, so that we could be part of His home. As you come to Him, the living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious, you also, like living stones, are being built as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, in order to bring spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it says in Scripture, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who believes in him will certainly not be put to shame. Therefore, you who believe, this is an honor. But for those who do not believe, the stone with the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone over which they stumble is a rock over which they fall. Because they continue to dis disobey the word, they stumble over it. And that is the consequence appointed for them. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, the people who are God's own possessions, so that you may proclaim the praises of Him who called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. At one time, you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. At one time, you were not shown mercy, but now you have been shown mercy. This is the word of the Lord. The verse of the day, Alleluia, Alleluia, Christ is risen, He is risen indeed, Alleluia. I am the way, the truth, and the life, says the Lord, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Gospel reading for today is John chapter 14, verses 1 to 12. This will also serve as our sermon text for today. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to be with me, so that you may also be where I am. You know where I am going, and you know the way. Lord, we do not know the way where you are going, Thomas replied. So how can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you would also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Lord, said Philip, show us the Father, and that is enough for us. Have I been with you so long? Jesus answered. And you still do not know me, Philip? The one who has sent me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? 
Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I am telling you, I am not speaking on my own, but the Father who remains in me is doing his work. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I tell you. The one who believes in me will do the work that I am doing. And he will do even greater works than these. Because I am going to the Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We join in confessing our faith using the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We join in singing the hymn of the day.
Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Home sweet home. Boy, it's nice to be home. Are you feeling like home is sweet? Are you feeling like home is nice? Especially being under a kind of lockdown for the last month. Maybe you don't feel like home is so sweet. How's work going from home? How's teaching the kids? How's this normal life going? Home probably doesn't feel so sweet to you or, or so nice. It probably feels like you're trapped. Like you just want to get out. Maybe for some of you, you would like to go to work. Others of you maybe would like to go on a vacation, especially with the weather gradually getting warmer. Wouldn't it be nice just to go up north, do a little fishing, maybe read a book, hang out with family and friends and just have a, a good time without any worries or concerns? It does sound nice. Can you remember the last time you went on a vacation? How did you feel when you left? And how did you feel when you finally came back? I really like the feeling of coming back from a vacation, actually. You feel rejuvenated. You feel fresh. Your mind is clear. And my favorite part happens in the last couple of miles as we pull off the highway and get on our exit and we go past the shell station and then we drive past some farms and some houses and there finally it is our home and I can't help but think home sweet home it's nice to be home it's nice to have your own bed to sleep in it's nice to get back into a normal routine home sweet home Today we hear about a home we long for. A home that has been prepared for us Christians by God's grace. And today Jesus shows us the way home. Home sweet home. I don't know if it really felt like home. Because they were renting the place to celebrate the Passover meal. You'd probably expect them to be excited and joyful to be gathered together for a wonderful meal just to spend time together. But the atmosphere changed. It didn't seem as joyous anymore. Well, what happened? Well, one of the disciples was pointed out for his plans. His plans to betray his teacher, his Savior. And so we see Judas run out of the room. We see him leave the dinner table. And maybe we see the disciples kind of tugging on their, their collars a little bit, wondering, what's going on? Where did Judas go? What does he have planned? You probably could feel the tension in the air. Maybe you've experienced that kind of tension with yourself and your family around the table. Maybe you were super happy and excited, and then all of a sudden, conversation kind of changed. Maybe there was a fight. Maybe someone said something a little awkward. Maybe someone brought up a sad conversation. And you just don't know what to say. I kind of picture the disciples somewhat being like that as they hear about what Judas is doing and where they see him run off. But there's even more that added to this conversation and maybe the sad feeling. The disciples just heard Jesus say he's going to have to leave. And to top it all off, they can't come with. Man, the thoughts that have probably were flowing through their mind. Where is Jesus going? Well, why can't we come with? What's going to happen with our lives if he's going off somewhere? 
Well, Peter asked one of those questions. He said, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I'm going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. Peter was confused. He, he didn't understand what Jesus was saying, and the other disciples didn't either. Uh, Thomas even asked Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? They simply didn't understand what Jesus was saying. And he had taught them what was going to happen, but they were just oblivious and didn't put the two, to, two together. But Peter kept on insisting that he was not going to let Jesus go off on his own. He was going to follow Jesus. There was nothing that was going to get in his way, not anyone, not even himself. He was willing to die for Jesus. And, and what does Jesus say to that? He says, will you really lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. Could you imagine how Peter felt when Jesus responded that way? Could you imagine how you would feel if he said, Jesus, I'm going to follow you anywhere, and wherever you go, I will go. No one's going to get in my way. I will even die for you. But then Jesus says, in less than 24 hours, you're going to de deny me three times? What a blow. Peter must have felt down. He, he must have felt sad. So now you have this rogue disciple who, who left the dinner table and went on his way. And then you just found out Jesus is going to be leaving too. And, and you don't know where, you don't know when, or what's going to happen. And then if you're Peter, you just found out you're going to deny Jesus three times and you don't even know when and where that's going to happen. Man, what a load. They must have felt sad. They must have felt overwhelmed. They must have felt fear in every possible way. But Jesus does what Jesus does best. He comforts them. He says, do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to be with me, so that you may also be where I am. You know where I am going, and you know the way. Jesus had told the disciples what was about to happen, but they didn't understand what was going on. They, they were confused. They, they didn't know what would happen in the days ahead. And they certainly needed that comfort now, but they would need it as Jesus approached the cross on his own. It would be trying times. How could Jesus give such comfort? How could Jesus give such reassurance? He says, believe in God. That's how. Believe also in me. Jesus, the Savior of the world. Jesus was God, who came into this world as both God and man. The God who had power to create all things, who had power to control everything that was going on. There was no reason for the disciples to worry and be concerned. They had the Savior. They had the Savior of the world on their side. Nothing to worry. Don't let your hearts be troubled. And keep your eyes 
on the future. Don't worry about this life. Keep your eyes on the home my Father has for you. A home filled with mansions. Have you ever been in a mansion before? I can't say I have. I haven't had that opportunity. The closest I've probably gotten is watching videos on, on TV or online of millionaires and billionaires' homes and mansions. Maybe you've gotten to see in some of the homes of famous people recently as they film their, their TV shows on, on TV from home. It's amazing how much they really have. All the, the bedrooms and bathrooms, the, the, the pools and courts. It's beautiful. But they don't compare to God's mansions. God's mansions are perfect. They're beautiful in, in every way. E even the city is beautiful, as we hear in Revelation. The wall was built of jasper, while the city was pure gold like clear glass. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls, each of the gates made of a single pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold like transparent glass. What an amazing place. It would be jaw-dropping, seeing all that wonder and beauty everywhere. It would be shocking. Yes, the, the building and the structures are perfect, but life is perfect there too. No sickness, no death, no worries. What a life. Wouldn't we want to live there? When you compare... God's heavenly home to our earthly home? How does it compare? It probably doesn't compare very closely, does it? I don't have to tell you twice that your home isn't perfect. Because mine isn't either. Maybe at home you, you see yourself Losing your temper with your kids. At home, maybe you see yourself not talking to your spouse because you got in a fight. Maybe at home, you find yourself not wanting to listen to your parents because you've had enough of them. Maybe at home, you're feeling a little alone. Maybe you haven't seen people in quite a while. Maybe at home, you have other worries and concerns. Maybe at home, you're not sure if you can even pay the bills. Home sweet home? I don't know. It doesn't always feel that way, does it? So how do we get from this home to the heavenly home? If you ask people that question, they'll give you different answers. Some people will say, well, if the structures are made of that kind of material in heaven, and it's this size, well, that's going to cost a, a pretty penny. Uh, but the reality is no gold or silver or dollar bills could ever pay our way into heaven. Someone might say, you have to be a, a good person, be nice to people, just Live your life in the best way possible. But we can't do that. We can't live it perfectly. We fail too often at that. There's no way we'll get into our heavenly home that way. Or maybe you might hear, don't worry about it. There, there's another heaven, there's another home. Everybody's going to get in anyways. But there's only one heaven. And there's only one way to get in. And if we follow these ways, we'll get into a home. 
if you really want to call it that. We'll enter a prison, a nightmare, a place of terror and fear and utter pain, a place of hell, a place that we don't want to call home, a place that is not sweet, a place that is not nice. We don't want to go there. But that's what we deserve. That's the place we would head if left on our own. So I'll ask again, what is the way to the heavenly home that the Father has there for us? Well, Jesus gives the disciples and us that answer. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you would also know my Father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. There are not many roads or many ways to the heavenly home. There is only one way, one road, one person we have to go through. And that's Jesus. Faith in Him, faith in our God. And our Savior had to travel alone the road to the cross, where He would suffer hell, where He would suffer the pains that we deserve. He would die the death for us. And because of that death, because of our risen Savior, we now gain access through the way that is through Jesus into heaven. A heavenly home that He has prepared for us. This is certainly a place we call home here on earth. But there is certainly a lot of trouble and hardship. And the reality is, this is not our home. We are only but strangers here. And we long for the heavenly home that God has given us. Life is short here, in the big scheme of eternity. And life will eventually come to an end. There's a popular hymn that explains this well. I'm but a stranger here, heaven is my home. Earth is a desert drear, heaven is my home. Danger and sorrow stand round me on every hand. Heaven is my fatherland. Heaven is my home. We long for this heavenly home as Christians. We can't wait till we're finally there. It doesn't matter if we're 90, 50, 20, or even 2. We wait. We long for the day when our Savior will return in glory and bring us to our heavenly home that He has prepared for us. A life with Him. And there's been times in my ministry where I've worked with older people who are at the end of life. And sometimes I hear them say, Pastor, I, I can't wait to go home. I look forward to being with my Savior and being in His arms. can we say that for us too? No matter what stage in life we are in, we too long to be home, home sweet home in heaven. Could you imagine that day when you finally close your eyes and you're brought to that heavenly home as God's child and as a Christian 
and a believer in the Savior? And then you see the mansion before you that God has prepared for you, and you open the door, and they're standing to greet you as Jesus. And he says, Welcome home. I, I, I'm glad you are finally here. I'm glad I died that eternal death for you on the cross. So that you can live with me. And that you can live with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Home sweet home. What a place. The only way there is through Jesus. Believing in Him. The risen Savior. And we sing. There at my Savior's side, heaven is my home. I shall be glorified, heaven is my home. There are the good and blessed, those I love most and best. And there I too shall rest, Heaven is my home. Amen. Let us pray. We join to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for showing us the way to our heavenly home through Jesus Christ. We can't wait for the day when we will be brought to the home you have prepared for us. It truly will be a home, sweet home. We also thank you for the mothers and grandmothers and mother figures you have put in our lives today. We especially thank you for the Christian women who serve you and teach the little ones about Jesus. Please be with them and us as we continue to serve you. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We now conclude with the closing hymn. 